good morning. My, I, as I've just said, I'm, I'm John McInnes, a uh, professor at the University of Edinburgh and also a strategic advisor to the British Academy. And for my sins, uh, I've been through the 270 pages of the government's industrial strategy, which was uh, released in November. And I thought it'd be useful just as a sort of background to this event to go through what the, uh, the government's thinking as um, revealed in that industrial strategy is around uh, big data and its implications for the UK economy. Okay. Um, first thing to say is it does represent something of a shift in government policy. For the last 20 years, the government stance has pretty much been to uh, let business get on with it, and the emphasis has been on getting government out of the way rather than um, government uh, directly intervening in the economy and trying to stimulate activity. Um, and there's a couple of things that I think lay behind this the, the shift that's taken place. Uh, one is a concern about skill shortages uh, post Brexit, and uh, in particular, a concern that migrants are overrepresented in sectors of the economy that are dependent on data skills. A lot of the highly skilled data people we have in the UK uh, are from mainland Europe and North America, and there's some concern about um, the, the skill situation in a decade or two decades' time. Uh, and there's also some concern about an insufficient supply of the right kinds of skills uh, from the education and training systems in the UK. Uh, so what's the industrial strategy going to do about it? Um, the strategy sets out four uh, what it calls grand challenges, uh, and one of these is artificial intelligence and big data, although it's notable that the strategy just doesn't really say a lot about what it means by artificial intelligence or how it defines it, and AI, as you'll probably be aware, is, is, a, is a term that, that, that's really rather um, liquid. Um, it sets out quite a bit of uh, uh, it sets out a number of new funding streams, which I'll go into the detail of uh, in a minute. Uh, it's going to establish an industry-led artificial intelligence council, uh, and although it's called an artificial intelligence council, it looks as if that will deal with a lot of big data uh, issues as well, although that council has yet to be set up. Um, and Surprisingly, in some ways, although I think not surprisingly once you start to think about it, the industrial strategy has quite a lot to say about ethics, public trust, and big data. And I think the reason it says quite a lot about that uh, is for one overriding concern. Um, at the moment, broadly speaking, we live in a world where people are happily uh, freely giving up their data. We're quite content, for the most part, to sort of tick the I've read the terms and conditions box when you sign up to an internet service provider or whatever else it may be. Um, like the app on um, Vernon's ice cream business, uh, when we sign up to, to, to those agreements, we usually uh, agree to uh, yield uh, rights over the data that we create uh, in being party to that agreement. How long that situation will continue to exist uh, is anybody's guess. Uh, but my guess would be that that situation will not continue to exist for much longer. As people become aware not just of the civil liberties implications of uh, revealing uh, various um, facts or information about their lives, but also become aware of the value uh, to other organizations of the data that, that, that's created from their activities, uh, then public trust in big data will rise up the political agenda fairly fast. And so I think it's quite forward-looking of the government and quite valuable that in the industrial strategy, quite a lot of attention is paid to the ethics of big data and issues around public trust, issues around confidentiality, issues around who owns the data that my activities might create and who has the right to use that data to, to different ends. I think we'll fairly rapidly move away from the kind of um, rather sort of laissez-faire setup that we have around that at the moment. Okay, what about funding? Uh, there will be a £2 billion investment fund, uh, which sounds quite a lot of money, although spread over, the, there's, no, there's no time scale attached to that £2 billion, and £2 billion over a long period of time uh, isn't quite as substantial as it might first uh, 
as it might appear at first sight. Um, it's also worth saying that most of the funding described in the industrial strategy is funding that in some way or another al often already exists. So it's a redescription re of some existing activities, the coordination of some activities, rather than necessarily lots and lots of, of, of new money that wasn't there before. Uh, there will be a £700 million fund uh, for innovative uses of AI. Um, it's yet to become clear exactly how that money will be distributed, but fairly shortly it will be possible to apply to the challenge fund to, to, along the lines of saying, um, I want to do this with big data. And again, it's not clear where the dividing line between artificial intelligence and the use of artificial intelligence and those kind of algorithms and the use of other kinds of ways of dealing with big data, whether that, where that uh, frontier will be drawn. Uh, but if you can make a case that you're doing something innovative, then uh, challenge funding will be available. Uh, there's also some smaller pots of money on more specific activities. This, um, uh, some millions of pounds for audience of the future uh, you say, well, what's audience of the future? Um, that's looking at artificial intelligence and um, virtual reality applications. Um, there is 30 million to test AI innovative educational technology and online digital skills courses. Um, again, it's not completely clear whether that's just about digital skills courses or whether it's about innovative technology in digital skills courses. Um, and uh, there's £20 million, pounds, which does seem like a small amount for uh, applications of AI within what they call next generation services. And by that, it simply meant services that are made possible by the use of new forms of, of, of data. So the, the, the take home there is that there is money around, although it's not yet clear exactly how it will be accessed. Um, the industrial strategy also says quite a lot about training. Uh, and the, the first and most important thing it says is there is a clear need for more people in the labour market with STEM skills. By STEM it just means science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Uh, we know from things like the reports by National Numeracy uh, that the British workforce is, is dramatically underskilled when it comes to dealing with uh, not just data, but any kind of quantitative information or any kind of numbers. Um, roughly half the workforce in Britain wouldn't get a D pass, uh, which isn't really a pass, a GCSE maths, if they were to sit the exam tomorrow. Um, about 40% of the workforce in Britain has trouble understanding uh, simple supermarket offers of 10% off or three for the price of two, things like that. So there is, a, um, um, there is at one level a, 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 a lack of skills. Another level is what I sometimes think of as the Simon Jenkins problem, uh, which is a kind of a view that, well, knowledge of mathematics or numbers or data is all very well, but what's really important is judgment. And I'd be the last person to say that judgment isn't important, uh, but sometimes it's nice if judgment is based in some part upon evidence that quite often takes a, a, a numerical form. So the, the strategy quite rightly makes quite a lot about the dearth of STEM skills. It says nothing at all about how that's going to be addressed, uh, apart from a short paragraph about the Office for Students. And I think it would be rather optimistic to expect the Office for Students, amongst all the other things it might be doing around the regulation of universities, uh, to do much about changing the proportion of graduates who have STEM skills. Uh, we've been doing our own thing within the social sciences around that, and others will be talking about that a bit later on this morning. Uh, you don't just learn STEM skills and STEM subjects. Um, and one of the things we've been trying to do within the social sciences is ensure that, that more graduates coming out of the social sciences are equipped with the kind of skills that you typically associate with a STEM graduate when it comes to things like uh, numeracy, maths, data analysis, and things like that. Um, the next uh, big topic is T-levels. Uh, these are the uh, qualifications which will come in in the wake of a Sainsbury report which was released just over a year ago about um, 
giving technical education in, U, in, in the UK the same kind of attention that uh, more traditional forms of education have been given in the past. Uh, T levels will be kind of broadly equivalent to A levels, but they'll be based on a technical education. Um, the strategy says, well, there'll be half a million pounds a year for T levels, but that's for all T levels, and only that there's about 18 different areas. Uh, one of them, uh, th these different areas are called pathfinder routes. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, just called digital, and digital probably embraces more artificial intelligence, big data, and all the kinds of things that we're talking about today. And the earliest that those new educational routes will start will be September 2019. It'll probably be a bit later. Uh, 2019 will be the, the, the pilot phase. So there's some, there, there will be some kinds of technical training which are focused on data. We don't yet know what precise form uh, they'll take. Uh, there's 84 million to improve computing, teaching, and education, both at school level and at university level. One of the puzzles in the labour market at the moment is that um, computing science graduates have a relatively poor employment performance, and mm -hmm. it's not always clear why that is. Um, there's going to be a national retraining scheme. This is really about lifelong learning, which will be overseen by the CBI and the TUC, which, is, which again reflects this kind of shift towards slightly, great, uh, uh, slightly more interventionist stance by the government. We haven't seen schemes overseen jointly by the CBI and TUC for quite some time uh, in the UK. Uh, and within that national retraining scheme, about 40 million will be focused on digital and artificial intelligence. But this is for the upskilling of existing workforces within a kind of lifelong learning uh, perspective. Uh, and there will also be an extra 45 million, mostly through the Turing Institute, uh, for more uh, um, PhD grants, um, doctoral grants, and postdoctoral grants. Uh, for research on artificial intelligence in universities. Um, finally, uh, some sort of more general points about the industrial strategy. Uh, it makes the case, and it's almost certainly right to make the case, that um, the UK has some of the best data in the world. Uh, for example, the, the range of geospatial data that's available in the UK is unparalleled. There's all kinds of NHS data and so on. Um, the quick question is how accessible that data is. Um, uh, not just in terms of, of ethics and confidentiality and privacy, but also in terms of just the technology of accessing it and, and getting that data into a form that's tractable and manageable uh, for, for other uses. Um, There'll be a new Centre for D Data Ethics and Innovation created. Again, we don't know the details of that, but that follows on from the, the emphasis on ethics and the strategy. Uh, there'll be digital innovation hubs for life science research, uh, which will link up to the NHS, uh, but there's no word about what other kinds of, of, of focused activity there might be. And as Vernon hinted at in his presentation, uh, there's often quite a long way between um, the kinds of aspirations that are set out in the industrial strategy and what will happen on the ground in practice. So that for some years now, uh, we've had a, a public commitment to the, the use of administrative data for research. Actually getting access to that administrative data, uh, creating the, 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 the resources necessary to make that, that data available uh, has been much, much slower. Uh, than was originally expected. And so my final point about the industrial strategy is uh, don't expect all those aspirations to happen tomorrow. This is more uh, a, a, an agenda being set for the next decade or so or something like that. Uh, so there you go, 270 pages in a little bit more than 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>